in my swine, I did my uh, master's degree at a swine digester in Danville, near Danville, Pennsylvania, and it was called, and is called, the Pinehurst Swine Digester. And we are in the Pinehurst room talking about digestion. Isn't that nice? So I want to talk about a project we got involved with, which is uh, looking at livestock methane emissions estimated and mapped for county level scale for the contiguous United States. Contiguous or continuous, whichever way you want to say, we've had arguments on our, in our, with ourselves on that. So what did we do? Uh, we didn't do a great, a great amount of research, but um, some of the last presentation helps me set up that what we did, what I discovered was that some of the numbers can be refined and probably should be. I want to tell you about uh, what we worked on. We estimated enteric methane emissions for dairy and cattle for the uh, United States, of so 48 states, on a county level basis. We also estimated the manure methane emissions for dairy on a county level basis on all 48 states, for poultry for the top six states at a county level and for all other states at a uh, state level, and for swine county level for the top states, which was five states, and state level for other states. Then we plotted that on a, on a map. So a couple things to know. Um, we used the National Ag Statistics Service and asked uh, data for inventory from 2012 for our, uh, our number of animals and head. This is for the low, lower 48 only. And the project was funded by ExxonMobil. And they came to uh, Alex Ristoff in our department and asked him if he could do this and provide some maps. And Alex came down the hall and said, hey, Menor guy, can you help me with this? So I said, sure, sounds like fun. I don't know what I'm doing, but, I'll, but we'll get there. So our uh, project team, I have in red, kind of the four main uh, movers and shakers here. Alex Ristoff, Dr. Ristoff uh, did the enteric estimations. Mike Harper provided the inventory analysis from the NAS data. Uh, set up nice spreadsheets and gave them to us to, to manipulate. Uh, myself, I, I did the manure estimations, and then Rick Day worked on the mapping component. The other folks here um, had, had great parts and contributed, but not quite as much uh, with the nuts and bolts as the rest of us. So what do you do? You, you uh, look at the NAS data, and they provide categories of inventory of animal on county basis. And here, this is just for the cattle. Right? We had nine categories, lactating dairy cows, dry cows, dairy replacement heifers, cattle on feed, beef cows, beef replacement heifers, heifers and steers not on feed, calves and bulls. So we have to take the NAS data, and now we've got to find the enteric and manure methane emissions estimated for all those categories at, a, at all 3,000 counties of the, of the lower 48. So it's you know, quite an endeavor. I'm going to give you one slide on the enteric methane emissions. And uh, I did this yesterday. So <laughs> close that huge screen. I'm just going to walk. Through. So, uh, yeah. Let's look, I want to look with you. Um, this methane emission from the enteric, right? So from the gut of the cow. Alex Ristoff did this and uh, would tie in, and certainly Tracy, who just spoke, would know a lot more about this than I do. Right? But he took the dry matter feed intake which was uh, NRC uh, you know, numbers, multiplied it times the methane emission factor, which he had specific uh, papers that he went to for those factors, multiplied it and in, in, you know, got it out to a year annual basis, and then times that animal population. And that's how he derived his enteric methane uh, numbers. And that's all I'm going to say about the enteric part. If you want to ask questions on that, we can see where we get. Um, the poultry and swine categories were also added. So I told you we had nine layers, nine uh, categories. I don't want to say layers because now we have layers actually here. Um, poultry, we had four different categories of birds. We did not look at turkey, broyers, layers, pullets, roosters, swine. We had two categories. So we went from nine up to uh, now 15 different categories of animals. Uh, breeding swine included sows, sows with litters, and boars. Uh, market animals were adjusted. From the NAS data, we looked at they have total uh, swine inventory for the county. And now we know that that includes feeder hogs and um, finisher hogs all at one time. So we need to know what that population is. We went to the National Pork Board 
and got some USDA slaughter numbers and looked at that and determined that we would use 30% of our animals under the kilogram here are 50 pounds. So at any one time, we said 30% of our animals are under 50 pounds. So I did a short literature review. I went into this and Alex said, can you help me with this? I said, yeah, this is good. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna find the best methane emission figures for swine on a deep pit and swine in the anaerobic lagoon and dairy cows that are on pasture and dairy cows that are you know, on an anaerobic uh, digester and dry cows that are in a pasture. Oh, yes, it starts to get complicated. So I spent about six hours one day and at the end of the day, I really didn't have any numbers. I was like, how am I gonna do this? So I wanted to find the most recent science and it was very hard. So I ended up, I have here, you know, we had three species and 15 animal categories and all these manure storages to think about. And it was, it was overwhelming. So I stepped on it and I came back to the office and, and I started to just go back and I say I settled on the EPA data tables because they provide a good tool and it's this tool, tool we use. Um, but there are some shortcomings that I'll, I'll point out. And this is the, uh, the document or publication that we refer to. So what did I do? I took these manure, I'm gonna go back here again. We took these manure uh, you know, estimates, how are we gonna figure them out? First step is we determine the maximum manure methane emission. So this is a common IPCC methodology uh, EPA would, would follow this, and I'm following some of the guidance that I have with EPA. I want to take the head or the uh, inventory that I have provided to me from NAS. I look at the volatile solids, which is provided from the table. I multiply those together, and I multiply them four times the maximum methane generation potential, and I multiply that times methane density. I end up getting you know, kilograms of methane expected per year for that animal category. So that is the maximum methane generation potential. So that's going to tell us with all those volatile solids, what can we expect? The next step, step two, reduces that maximum uh, manure methane emission because farm level emissions are not going to be maximum. We're going to have some factors that reduce that. It's not going to be perfect laboratory settings. We're not going to get methane from every molecule of volatile solids we have, etc. So let me explain this formula, which is a step two, and in my spreadsheets, they were all just multiplied the whole way across. Um, I would have to take a summation of waste management system percentage, which that's the percent of animals in a state housed within a specific manure system. So simply, that might be in North Carolina. It's not going to be that someone use an example. Um, say North Carolina, we had 30% of our market hog uh, finisher facilities on a deep pit. And we had 70% of our animals uh, on a manure system that was anaerobic lagoon. So I would put you know, 0.3 in here and 0.7 over here. So that starts to break out my total inventory for that animal category and define what type of manure storage system they are on. Now I take the methane conversion factor for that particular situation, which is a percent of the maximum methane generation potential expected. So it's a percentage of the maximum potential on the last slide. That makes sense, we have a small group, so if that doesn't make sense, I can try to clarify. Okay, well, I think I'll help clarify, because I'm gonna show you a lot of charts that aren't too pretty. So anyhow, that's what we did. Now we have to sum that. In many cases, we have more than just a 30%, 70%. We have a, a different deal going on. So uh, what I've done now to torture all of you is I've actually taken five tables from the EPA document, the PDF. I put them up here, and I you know, I'll give you a quiz later. But this is not EPA versus the table. This is volatile solids. <laughs> so if we look at this, over here was uh, a nonsense for us. This is the volatile solids. So EPA per, a has numbers for all the states. So let's use Alabama. right? They're going to give us a volatile solid excretion for all these animal categories. Part of the job was to figure out which mass inventory category fit with which animal category by the EPA. And we had to make some assumptions, so we already have a little bit of slop, if you will, in our numbers. So appreciate that we had to go through um, all 50 states, 
or all 48 states and all 3,000 counties, uh, you know, and extrapolate this. I have a, you know, a file of 50 spreadsheets for cattle, a file of 50 spreadsheets for swine, and a, a file of 50 spreadsheets for poultry. Next EPA table is this maximum methane generation table. And some of you may recognize if you're he, he would know, Tracy would know the IPC codes and all that. Uh, I kind of left some of those off, but look at this. If we look at the animal category, we can come over and say, what is the factor that EPA recommends we use? I know it's hard to see, because all I did was pull this in from a PDF. But if you look at some of these, right, 1976, 76, 81, 84, right, we have uh, broiler and swine numbers that are recommended by EPA that are there before we even had phytase added to our feeds. So when I start to look at this, I'm like, oh boy, now I'm using numbers that I don't feel comfortable with. Right? How have diets changed? How have uh, storages changed? How has management changed? How has water usage changed? We could just go on and on. So these are, these are old factors. So some people, like Tracy, might be able to say, hey, I have better numbers. So with this group, one thing I would encourage, I don't, this is certainly not something that I feel like I would be doing, but some of the people with our, our uh, you know, efforts here might be able to summarize some of this stuff or go to EPA and say, hey, we'd like to help you get better numbers and find that number. Some of you that are into the, into the data re and research and know the literature values might be able to improve these quite a bit. So I would I, you know, encourage that. Five minutes around this has. Well, I only have 15 more EPA slides. So. <laughs> the waste management category. Now we've got to take, I got an inventory in a county or a state. Alabama, for instance, they have published data. For dairy cows, 51% are in Alabama are said to be on pasture, 16% on daily spread, 7% so, uh, solid, 10% liquid storage. So I can go through and take all those numbers and get those into the spreadsheet and find out what that waste management system is in my formula. Next we have, uh, there's two tables here because of the document went from one page to another when I pulled them over. But this is the solid manure methane conversion factor. I'll drop down here to the bottom. The waste management system for solid manure, solid storage, uh, cool climate or temperate climate, we have a conversion factor. 2% of the maximum methane is what we actually expect to lose in that situation. So the manure itself might even give us 100 pounds, but if it's in that storage, we expect 2 pounds. If it's in a warmer climate, four. So we had we had a list of which states are cool, which states are warmer. Final methane conversion was for liquid manures, and again, this is more intense with uh, a state by state analysis. And here, anaerobic lagoon in Alabama is going to give us 77 percent, or 77 pounds out of 100 from that maximum methane, and across through swine, beef, etc. So those are the tables we used, and those are the formulas we did. We and we put all that together. And I spent about a month working on this, it seemed, and it was over the holidays, and just got forever. It's, but a lot of pay, cut, paste, not for me, this is what we got. So I got in the car to come down here with Eileen Fabian on, on Monday morning. I said, she said, what are you talking about? I said, oh, we made these maps with methane. You know, I started telling her about it, and she goes, oh, so you made a map of where the animals are in the, in the States. I said, yeah, that's what we did. You got me. So um, here it is. This is the enteric methane emissions that Alex put together. Um, and you can, you know, if you know the dairy industry, you can say, yeah, okay, this is where the cows are. And, you know, you can, this is where the hot spots are. The next slide here, I'll have three maps to show you uh, quickly here. This is the county level livestock. So this is the uh, work that I did adding the cattle, swine, and poultry, in this case, all together. And you can see the hubs of where these animals are and you know here we are right here so we are in a hub of methane emissions primarily to the poultry and swine uh, data poultry of course not emitting as much methane as the swine and then here it is all together Alex's enteric numbers and my uh, manure storage met, uh, numbers for all three species all combined and it's a nice map and as Eileen pointed out this is where the animals are but it is a nice Thing to have right now we have tabular data that can actually give a number and if anybody needs some of that we could probably share it and start to, to look at it there are some holes in there so a couple summary thoughts that I have are this is big picture stuff 
And when I think about all the stuff that we went in, there's a lot of room for error. He just showed us numbers that said his numbers range from here to here in, what, 20-some papers, right? Yeah. yeah, right, so it ranged from here to here. And there's a lot of room, and there's a lot of unknown. So I said, you can refine this, and then you can follow those refinements with refinements and refinements with refinements. We could get going, and it could get better and better. So I'm saying that some of this stuff from 1976 may not be giving us the best conversion factors. So if we can work on that and improve it, that would be fantastic. And I'm following up. I used to manage Style Farm, and it was in Bedford County, Pennsylvania, and sometimes I miss those wide open spaces. Um, and it was a lot of fun. That's the farm I used to manage there. Any questions? <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. That's a great question. Why did ExxonMobil want to fund this? She's a little unclear. I am too. Yeah. I think I think it's just because right they're 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 under a lot of public pressure. And they're probably saying, okay, where are the other methane sources in, in, yeah. in the country? You, you can just imagine sitting there and say, okay, let, let's go out and find out. Let's, let's go find the, the, find the right animal people to do this. And, you know, this was kind of our charge and our scope of work, and this is what we provided. And we really didn't get into all that stuff I wish I could have done, which was what is the real number. Any more questions? I the the inventory or the EPA numbers, the inventory of the animals, each each state calculates a state inventory of emissions. Oh, which, uh, that, which then goes to the, uh, the US EPA who um, aggregate all the information from all the states into the national inventory. Oh yeah, so just imagine how much more slop they have than I do. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know if that's how the system is working for EPA, then that would be interesting just to know and see. I'm not sure how that process works. Uh, there, you know, whenever we look, if you were at Mark Dubin's uh, presentation yesterday with the Chesapeake Bay, like the Chesapeake Bay uh, program has found that the NAS data, those inventories have some holes in them, and they're only done every four years, and they're trying to predict things on an annual basis. And like, well, how did things fluctuate? So the Chesapeake Bay program is going out and getting real time uh, or much better picture of inventories than uh, the NAS data has. So there, there's, there's a lot of things going on. Are we good? Any more One questions? One last question. Yeah, Mario. Did you say you count those values that are related at the county level? Are there accessible somehow? At this point, um, or will be we, we were trying to get the pub get the, get a manuscript published on this and. The end of the day, the manuscript would not have all this county level data. So if you email me or Alex Kristoff, we could probably see. I, I would want to make sure I clear things with him before I just start zipping, uh, you know, files around. But we would, we could provide summary data, etc. And you know, on my end, I'd be happy to, to work with that and do that. We started to compare it to the EPA piece, right? He just mentioned EPS estimates. We started to compare it to that, and we are very close. Of course, we're using their methodology, and we're using government numbers. So, of course, we expect to be close. So, thanks, everybody. I look like Rhonda. Okay. Thank you.